So great to see all of you here. Um, so what I'm going to do is going to talk about this project called Sustainability Assessment Protocol for Geothermal Utilization. And there's the website of the project, so you can take a look at what this is actually all about. This is actually, I'm sort of a, 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 an advisor on this project. There's actually a PhD student that is actually doing this work. Her name is Ruth Shorto, but then it's me, Brenda Davisdottir, who is involved as well, as well as uh, Guðni Axelsson from Isor, Jonas Ketilsson, and then Ladislis Weibach are involved in this as well. Anyway, so uh, just to give you a little context, of course, we're very grateful for receiving funding from Georg. So Georg is fully funding this project. It's a three-year project, and then it's actually conducted in three different countries. So sometimes it's as if Ruth is just on a travel grant. Um, it's fairly nice. Um, so we, and, but we also uh, sort of cooperate and have worked with essentially the uh, UNU Geothermal Training Program fellows. We have involved them as well in this project. And what it does and what we're doing is actually focusing on sustainable development and geothermal power. That is, how can geothermal development contribute to sustainable development? Um, so that's sort of primarily what we are dealing with in this project. Um, a little bit more on the context of this particular project. As I'm sure all of you are aware of, what we call sustainable energy development is an emerging paradigm. Um, the discussion on this somewhat in the international literature started around the year 2000, so it's fairly recent in the sustainability discussion. Uh, but the moment we step into anything that is linked to sustainable development, we're working in a multi-dimensional space, essentially. That is, um, sustainable energy development essentially aims at basically reducing both negative uh, health and environmental impacts from energy exploration. The focus is also on sort of the social dimension of sustainability, that is, to increase access, uh, asset, uh, access, affordability, uh, as well as energy security, and then, of course, as well, to increase the efficiency of energy use. All of this, then, is being done in the context of development of alternative energy resources, alternative to fossil fuels. That's basically what, when we talk about alternative energy resources, we're talking about alternatives to fossil fuels. Um, often, sort of when we bring up the issue of sustainable sustainability and geothermal resources, often people think we're only thinking about sort of sustainable yield or renewability of the resource. The problem that we're dealing with is much wider than that. Essentially, what we call renewability and sustained yield, if that's possible, is certainly a necessary component of sustainable energy development, okay? But it's not sufficient. There are many other dimensions that are involved in this project as well. Um, so basically this new paradigm, this emerging <coughs> paradigm of sustainable energy development requires a much broader assessment than maybe previously has been done of energy developments. Okay, so a little bit, just a slight sort of contextual background here. Just to remind you, so this is sort of the definition of sustainable development that we all work from. This is the 1987 Brundtland Commission definition of sustainable development. So sustainable development is a development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. I'm highlighting future generations because now we're moving into the necessity of long-term thinking involving multiple generations. <coughs> so just to remind you of that. What we also know is essentially is that sustainable development is at least a three-dimensional concept. Um, so basically the challenge with energy developments if we're trying to ensure sustainability is that we need to balance economic development, development of energy resources with what we call social and environmental objectives. When trying to sort of um, achieve this particular goal, what is also prescribed in, for example, the RIA Declaration from 1992 on sustainable development is that public participation and public consultation is essential. So we need to have a cons conversation with the public on issues of sustainability. 
the reason I'm highlighting this is this is exactly what we're trying to do in the GSAP project in multiple countries. So essentially, the reason why sustainable energy development became sort of a, a central paradigm to the sustainable development discussion is that research obviously shows that energy is a central component of all three dimensions of sustainable development. The economic one, you can't do anything without using energy. The social one, as well as the environmental one. And therefore, basically, the development of what we call sustainable energy systems is now certainly uh, as one of the priority issues in the move towards global sustainability. That's why this is enormously important. What was interesting though, those of you that know a little bit about sort of the sustainable development discussion, it really didn't become a central issue. It wasn't really a issue, a, a standalone issue, until around the year 2000. So this is actually fairly recent um, and a fairly recent discussion, for example, within the United Nations. Definitions of sustainable energy development. So essentially here are two definitions. We, in our project, we work from the second definition. The first one is shorter. Um, that one came first. So essentially the International Atomic Energy Agency in, a com in cooperation with the International Energy Agency in the year 2001 defined for the first time sustainable energy development as the provision of adequate energy services at a f affordable cost uh, in a secure and environmentally benign manner in conformity with social and economic development needs. You see clearly here how they evoke the different dimensions of sustainable development. Yo the Johannesburg Declaration that they came out in 2002, which is another milestone in the development of the sustainable development paradigm, is a much, more, a th much thorough uh, definition here it's defined as improving access to reliable, affordable, economically viable, socially acceptable, and environmentally sound energy services and resources, it's a mouthful, um, taking into account national specificities and circumstances. This essentially highlights the importance of actually looking at sustainability and sustainable development with a national perspective, not, we don't have sort of one shoe fits all kind of cases here, through various means such as enhanced rural electrification and decentralized energy systems, increased use of renewable energy, cleaner liquid and gas fuels, and enhanced energy efficiency. Um, so again, in the sustainable energy development literature, we tend to work from the second one simply because it's sort of more comprehensive. So essentially, out of the literature, you can actually tease specific features of energy systems that energy systems need to have if they are to contribute to sustainable energy development. Here are some of them. They need to be renewable, the resources need to be renewable or perpetual, perpetual for example, like solar energy. They need to be efficiently produced and used. They need to be economically and financially viable, obviously. They need to be secure and diverse, not just rely on one energy source, they need to be a, a diverse resource base. They need to be equitable, evoking the social dimension, readily accessible, available and affordable to the general public. It must have positive social impact and it must minimize environmental impacts. So these are sort of the general features that a development that is supposed to contribute to sustainable energy development needs to fulfill. So sustainable development goals for energy development then essentially basically describe what this particular development must fulfill. And it's directly related and linked to the features that I just showed you. So that's essentially, the link is very clear there. And then indicators then illustrate if a particular energy development is moving us towards these goals or not. So we always have a relationship basically between features of the necessary necessary features of the system and the goals of the development and then you have direct links from indicators to these goals. What is interesting is that there's been sort of um, an absolute and quite vocal need 
that has been expressed from practitioners um, calling for some type of framework for us to enable to sort of measure if energy developments are contributing to sustainable development. Maybe some of you know, for example, CDM mechanisms. You know how much you know about that? It's the clean development mechanism, which, for example, so Icelandic geothermal that was mentioned here earlier, you have to mention it earlier, they have big development plans in Ethiopia, for example, I think that, that's correct, in Ethiopia. Um, so essentially, if they can illustrate, basically, that their development is going to lead to a reduction in greenhouse gas emissions from that particular country, Reykjavik Geothermal would actually receive credits, carbon credits for that, and they're going to be able to sell that on the international market. But there's one condition in addition to actually reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. They have to show that the development is contributing to sustainable development in the region. So far, there is no sort of cohesive scheme, no protocol that actually enables them to illustrate that this is the case. So from the practitioner's point of view, this is really needed for us to really think about and setting up a framework to enable such assessments. There are already specific indicators for sustainable development, but they're very high level at the national level. This was developed by the International Atomic Agency and the International Energy Agency. There are also sort of resource and location specific indicator sets out there. For example, the International Hydropower Association protocol, as some of you may recognize, but that's specific to hydropower. We can learn from it, but there's no such protocol for geothermal, not yet but it will be soon. So the aim of the GSAP project is essentially to develop what we call a sustainability assessment protocol for geothermal utilization, which then should and hopefully will aid policy and decision making with regard to uh, geothermal energy developments. And we will illustrate whether particular energy developments down to the project level is actually contributing to sustainable energy development in the area or for a nation. And the sustainability protocol consists of specific sustainability goals that have been identified and a set of indicators of sustainable development that are specifically tailored to geothermal energy development projects. So the scale and the scope of how this can be used the intention is to enable use of this particular protocol at any stage in the geothermal development uh, process, from the strategic stage all the way through the operational stage, even to possibly the decommissioning stage. And again, it should enable both lo local and national energy planning authorities, donors, investors, financial institutions, to really try to understand if the impact of their investments or if the proposed energy developments are contributing to sustainable development. So, the project. A little bit on the development process. There are sort of seven steps that we go through. So the first step that obviously we went through quite a while ago was to define the purpose of the index, obviously, or the, or, of the protocol, is to evaluate if geothermal development contributes to sustainable development. The second step is then to define the sustainability criteria that the industry need to adhere to or developments need to um, fulfill. That was linked to the features that I showed you earlier. Obviously, that is, it's more developed than what I just showed you, but that's, that was the second step. The third step was then to identify what we call sustainability goals from the literature, okay, and also from workshops that I will actually mention here in a moment. Then we identify indicators linked to the goals from the literature and from input from the workshops that we have uh, um, conduct. The fifth step is then to use what is called a Delphi process to evaluate the goal and indicator suitability at different regional locations using what we call the Delphi instrument, which is a public participatory instrument. And again, different locations, then essentially we're thinking about both geography as well as the stage of development. So we need to sort of test this set out in different areas. Then basically we repeat 
the process from step three at different locations. So we go, for example, we've done this in Iceland, we've done it in New Zealand, and now we're doing this in Kenya. Um, so, but out of this, we receive what we call a core goals and indicators that apply at all locations. And then we have, in addition to that, side sets sort of that are applicable in specific conditions, depending on the state of development of the country or other, due to other sort of uh, specific uh, reasons. Again, I've already told you this, so essentially what we have already done, we've somewhat completed actually steps one through six, so we're actually getting close to the end. This, com this project will be completed next year. Um, I don't think Ruth will define, def defend her thesis in, though in, until the beginning of 2015, we'll see. Um, so we've completed steps one through, uh, one through six. We have conducted the workshops, which we do in what is called a world cafe format, and we do that in different countries. And we do the Delphi surveys in three different countries. And this is, again, is just to, ga to gain insight <coughs> into the different specificities, different requirements that different countries have when it comes to sustainable development. We did this in Iceland in 2011 and 2012. We did this in New Zealand in 2012. And now we're almost done, actually, with the Kenya iteration. And it's going to be done and finished in November in um, this year, 2013. In addition to this, originally we planned on going, sort of doing one more country. We're going to do Dominica in the Caribbean. We kind of run out of money on that one. Uh, it's expensive, for example, to be in Kenya. So we decided to do, I think it actually turned out to be a really good decision, actually. We conducted a similar survey, both a workshop and a Delphi survey with UNU Geothermal Training Program Fellows. And that was very successful. Um, we will finish the protocol in 2014 and then well, you know, while we're in the process of publishing actually academic papers, of course, we will publish also a handbook, a practical handbook, describing exactly how um, companies can implement this, and also the plan is to develop, develop a software tool, making very, it very pra uh, practical to use. Just a few words on the workshops. Here are some pictures from the workshops. Conducted in Iceland, New Zealand, and Kenya. What we're doing here is drawing on local expertise and opinions. We invite a very, some of you actually participated in the Icelandic workshop. Um, and essentially, we're just trying to gawk and figure out what is important in different locations. And this then helps us define the online Delphi survey. So this is, for example, a structure of what we did in Kenya just uh, two weeks ago, or a little over a week ago, where we had sort of several rounds of people actually interacting and discussing what is important within the different dimensions of sustainability when it comes to geothermal power. And we had participants, you know, from the African Development Bank to sort of local decision makers. So that was, that was very successful and very interesting, very interesting insight we received um, from that. The Delphi technique, basically what we're doing there and what that is all about is that it's essentially sort of what we call a highly structured and formalized type of communication which is then used to draw on what we call unbiased opinions and trying to reach a consensus among participants on what is actually important. And this is used in many different contexts, policy making, decision making, and so on and so forth. We use it when participants are somewhat what we call geographically distant. It's hard to get a face-to-face -face exchange between sort of a big group of people. And then also we use it when um, possible disagreements exist among participants. So we're trying to tease out all these opinions without people really affecting one another or some intim intimidating others to actually just follow um, what they maybe should be saying rather than what they actually believe. Um, and in my opinion, this has actually been quite successful in this, um, in this uh, project. So the aim is basically to define and refine the list of critical geothermal sustainability goals and indicators and seek consensus on those. We have three rounds. So basically in the first round, you invite participants through the web. It's an online survey. Um, and in round one, then basically we create the goals together. 
the sustainability goals. Um, participants comment on and rate existing indicators that we drew from the literature and as well as inputs that we received from the World Cafes. New indicators are suggested. We take the results. We fix some of the, for example, indicators that were unclear. That often comes through the comments. Indicators that score very low. Maybe only 10% of the people think that they are important. We eliminate those. We go to round two. We rate goals and indicators. We receive comments. And then we go to the round three. Again, rating um, goals and indicators. And in the end, generally, we have very close to a consensus to what actually this group of participants consider important. So we basically, in each round, we eliminate those indicators that people do not think are important at all. Um, so I've essentially, just I have told you already why we use the Delphi. It's essentially to be able to draw sort of what sort of on local expertise and to uh, make sure that you know we minimize bandwagon effects and to avoid conflicts. It is there are some drawbacks to it. It requires quite a bit of facilitation. It's quite time consuming but quite effective. As I said, we've done this in Iceland. We've done it in New Zealand. We're now doing sort of the Kenyan version of this. And I just wanted to show you a few things here. So the highest rated goal in Iceland, for example, was actually derived from um, Guðni Axelsson's <laughs> definition of um, renewable, sort of a sustainable utilization. Then the second highest rated goal was linked to the environmental implications. Um, the indicators that people here in Iceland thought were really important was air quality, water quality, and the resource lifetime. Lowest scoring, I thought that was kind of interesting, was in the importance of economic efficiency, sort of the earning ratios of the companies. That was ever somewhat interesting. And also impact on local income was not, you know, people didn't think that was very important. The UNU Delphi was interesting. There, essentially, the importance of local job creation became quite important. And the lowest scoring were actually R&D expenditures, satisfied workers, and so on and so forth. Um, notice there that the highest rated goals differ somewhat from actually came out through the Icelandic um, assessment. How am I doing on time? I'm not, I'm not, I don't have a clock. I'm okay? All right. Um, I don't have the time in front of me. All right. So insights from the Kenyan workshop. Um, which I thought were really interesting. There essentially, there was a shift over to an enormous focus on the social benefits of geothermal developments in the area. What was interesting, I'll just flip back here to the Icelandic Delphi, most of those issues actually were removed. People didn't think these were important. The same thing was for the survey in New Zealand things that had to do with sort of social implications, were kind of health-related implications, were removed. Total the opposite in Kenya. These are the most important things that seem to pop up there. Social benefits, really, really important, very important to account for air and land degradation. Land degradation comes up again and again and again in Kenya as well. To account for what we call beneficiary ancillary activity. Did not come up in the Icelandic nor the New Zealand survey at all, and the impact on culture. Okay. And of course, that comes out of the issue of the Maasai community that has been relocated. So that became very clear. And then the impact on national economic importance. Uh, on the national economic impact, that was also really, really important in Kenya. So just to conclude here, so essentially what we do is that we take the results, basically from each region, we compare them, we essentially create a cohesive set of goals that apply to all regions, set of indicators that are linked to those goals that apply everywhere. The remainder then will constitute what we call a supplementary set that is applicable in specific settings. Um, and then what we aim to have is what we call a comprehensive framework that, that then should be used and should be possible to use to evaluate if specific developments are or expected to contribute to sustainable development. The handbook that will be created will then contain very detailed descriptions of how exactly this is implemented. Auditors could use it, those that might do this for practice. Um, and then essentially the indicators will of course provide measurable benchmarks. So this is going to, going to be very clear. Um, 
So just to conclude, uh, sustainable use and development of geothermal energy resources is absolutely necessary to enable sustainable development. And the goals and the indicators developed in this particular project are supposed to give sort of the needed um, detailed holistic view of the sustainability of geothermal energy developments. And then hopefully the handbook and the software development will turn somewhat of an academic project into hopefully a very practical application. And I think that's that. And thank you for listening. Thank you.